Does it work? <laughs> If your refrigerator breaks down, usually there's nothing you can do about it. But if you get to know its noises and a little bit about how it works, sometimes you can head off trouble. How do they work? Well, lick your wrist and blow on it. It feels cool, right? That's because when a liquid evaporates, it absorbs heat. That's the law. Couple that with the fact that it works backwards, too. When you take a gas and force it to become a liquid, it gives off heat. You get a refrigerator. The main parts of any refrigerator are two coils that sort of look like your car's radiator and a compressor, think of it like a pump, to move the gas around. The gas liquid that's in a refrigerator could be water and steam, except that the temperatures and pressures aren't really suitable. So instead they use something that evaporates a lot easier. Ammonia used to be popular way back when, but nowadays it's almost always Freon. That's a man-made substance with a complicated looking molecule. Try not to think about it. The way it works is simple. Imagine that gas being pumped, squeezed hard by the compressor into this radiator. Its official name is the condenser coil. In the condenser coil, it gets fooled because suddenly its temperature's dropped because it's like a radiator. That turns it into a high pressure liquid. That high pressure liquid goes up a pipe into the evaporator coil where the pressure's released and the evaporator gets cold. It also turns into a gas at that point, and the gas is returned back down to the compressor, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, sharp reviewers are asking, how come, if this is all one great big plumbing loop, can there be high pressure over here and low pressure over there? Well, look at the size of these two pipes. And for some hands-on experience with the concept, try blowing as hard and fast as you can through a drinking straw. You ever notice if you unplug a running refrigerator and then plug it back in again, it doesn't start right away? Well, you're asking that poor little compressor to start under extreme pressure. They have protection against that, but be nice. If you unplug it while it's running, leave it unplugged for a few minutes before you try to restart it. To regulate the temperature of the whole thing, you cycle the compressor motor on and off with a thermostat. What can go wrong? Well, the compressor motor can die Hardly ever. The, there could be a small leak somewhere and the gas escapes. Almost hardly ever. The condenser coils at the bottom or the back of the fridge can get dusty and less efficient. Often enough that you ought to clean them. And let's see, the evaporator can get caked with frost. That's an all the time. The frost comes from the humid air you let in every time you open the door. Now, Defrosting the refrigerator used to be a family affair, but science marched on. Now, mostly all of them are some sort of model of auto defrost. The newer ones use a sensor that tells when the evaporator isn't working very well. That prevents it defrosting needlessly, uh, like when you're on vacation. The newer ones also use their own warm refrigerant instead of an electric heater. And those kind also shut off the defrost as soon as the defrosting's done. The auto defrosts all need a system for getting rid of melted frost out of the compartment. Melted frost uh, technically in the trade is called water. For that they've got this little hose, sometimes it's visible on the inside, that runs down to the bottom. If the hose is visible, if it gets jammed with ice or a frozen pea, you can clear it out yourself. The hose goes down to the bottom to a pan on top of the warm evaporator where the water evaporates. If the hose gets cracked or falls off, the water simply makes a puddle on the floor. Now some people get emotionally disturbed when they see any frost at all. So enter the frost-free or frostless guys. Those aren't frost-free at all. They just hide the evaporator so you can't see the frost. But because that evaporator is hidden, there has to be a fan to circulate air around it. And through a scientific principle called sublimation, even frost that you put inside travels to the coldest spot, the hidden evaporator coils. That's the same scientific principle behind your ice cube slowly disappearing and your ice cream turning into rubber. The message here is you've got to seal everything. Because of that airflow, though, the frostless usually have better temperature controls. Mine has got a separate control for the freezer and a separate one for the refrigerator. Except on mine, the one inside the freezer is the real thermostat, and the one inside the refrigerator part is just an airflow control. That means that when I make the freezer colder, the refrigerator part gets colder. If I make the refrigerator part colder, 
it robs cold from the freezer. It's not a big problem, but if you like really hard ice cream but not frozen lettuce, you should observe which controls do what. The clue to which one is the real thermostat is it's the one that'll stop the motor if when you shut it all the way down. Frost freeze usually defrost with a timer. Every 12 hours or so, this little timer goes bleep, and the compressor motor is shut off and more heaters are turned on. Heaters? Boy, have they got heaters. There's a heater in the evaporator to melt the frost. There's a little tray underneath to collect the dripping water. That has a heater in it too. And then let's see, there are heaters all over the doors. That prevents condensation. Then there's the butter heater. The butter heater. Well, how'd you think they kept the butter soft anyway? All these heaters seem a little ironic in a refrigerator, don't they? But they're fairly low wattage, usually under 10 watts each. And fortunately, some places have got a mandatory energy use label so that you don't have to buy an energy pig. What kinds of things can go wrong with frost freeze? Well, two extra things. One, the fan dies. That almost always requires a replacement. And the other one is one of those hidden heaters in the hidden defrosting system can fail and the whole thing cakes up with ice. You can't see that ice, but you can feel it if you press the back of the freezer compartment or wherever it's located. That happened to mine and the whole thing has to be completely thawed and disassembled to replace that heater. I think if I'd known about that then, I could have got it back into operation for a while by just doing a major defrosting myself, but I'm not sure how long that fix would have worked for. Some people defrost their refrigerators with a hairdryer. That's okay if you like warped moldings and cracked seals, but it's, it's hard on the hairdryer. Then there's the running your vacuum cleaners backwards to put warm room temperature air and dust into the freezer. My actual favorite method is the pan of boiling water inside method. That takes a little time, but it gives you time to clean the rest of the kitchen floor to match the area around the refrigerator. Some refrigerators don't have auto defrost or even a compressor. Instead, they have a heater that boils the refrigerant to make the pressure. Well, I'm slipping it by on you because it's a little more complicated than that if you look at it. But there's a famous trick. If you have one of those, and remember that's an electrically operated, no moving parts refrigerator. If it stops working, try turning it upside down for 24 hours. It works. It's just, I'm not sure I know why it works. Mm -hmm.